So I personally am, I don't want to spend too much time talking about the M2 Mac 13 inch MacBook Pro. I feel like I've already made one video, at least mention it to, to some extent. But yeah, it's definitely one of those things where, yeah, they just put a new chip in it. It's an old form factor and they put a new chip in it, which is what happens every year for a lot of their devices without any real type of redesign. I mean, going from Intel to Apple Silicon was a big jump and the, and the form factor staying the same was honestly was fine because the, the, the change in architecture was so great that it still looking the same was perfectly fine. And if the MacBook Air, the M2 MacBook Air stayed the same this year, then yeah, I think most people would be like, all right, yeah, it's just, you know, a uh, year and a half iteration. Uh, you're, you know, I, I want to say year over year iteration, but it's a little longer than a year. And yeah, now this is what the new uh, M2 MacBook Air and the M2 13 inch MacBook Pro look like. Cool. And of course, if you want the newer design, you'll get the 14 uh, or 16 inch MacBook Pros. But because they changed the design of the M2 MacBook Air and kept the design for the M2 Mac 13 inch MacBook Pro the same, now it's like, all right, well, you're just making this product just to make it, and you're probably making it because you didn't sell as many M1 MacBook Pro 13 inch MacBook Pros as you thought you would. I mean, they still sold a lot. But yeah, I feel like it's it's one of those parts been laptops. I don't know if that's a, a, a good way of putting it. But yeah, it's it's nothing that's overly exciting. The the MacBook Air is, is, is exciting. And then even still, the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros are exciting. But this, <coughs> excuse me, whoo, this is not exciting. So uh, let's see what Dave 2D has to say. I've seen quite a few of his videos and his particular one is only six minutes. So I'm happy that at least his is short. So hopefully mine isn't too much longer, but I'm already two minutes over what his is. So uh, let's see what goes on. Apple M2 is finally here, and we're getting our first taste of it in this product, the M2 equipped 13 inch MacBook Pro, which is actually running a lot of dated hardware. And some of it is like six years old at this point, but I was able to compare this M2 equipped product with the M1 products from the previous generation, as well as some of the big boy M1 Pro products. And this new M2 chip is really good. The CPU is like 10 to maybe 15% better than what was available in M1, like the base M1. And I, I probably will interject a, a few more times when it comes to benchmarks, but how, man, who was it? I forget who it was. I feel like I made an audio, I did make an audio recording of it. Um, it might've been Juan Bargio or I don't know, but just the, the important yeah, benchmarks have their, their importance. That is cool. But when it comes to real world applications, that's what's most important. And then, yeah, a lot of these YouTubers will definitely show like, hey, well, this is what I did all day, blah, 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 blah. So like, that's more important. And you need some type of baseline, which the benchmark, I feel, is the baseline because everybody's real world application is different. Uh, but yeah, even looking at the screen right now, all right, it's a little better. I I mean, like, I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to. Oh, uh, yeah, it, it should be because if it wasn't, then like, well, why would I buy this thing? Uh, but yeah, it's it's a little better. Uh, he might even say percentage wise, but what that actually is, uh, that's what a little over a uh, thousand points. So, so yeah, cool. But, um, okay. So yeah, I know I'm talking before he probably gets to his real world, uh, applications of it, but yeah, it's just benchmarks. All right. So, and then even when it comes to most people, even the people specifically designed to buy any type of product, but we're talking about this one in particular, um, battery life for a laptop is important. I think that's probably one top three. Like, how long is am I going to be able to, to stay away from my from my uh, from my, a power outlet? Um, and then, if you're doing, you know, some type of video editing and coding, all right, how much time does it take to to do you know my projects, which I, I think we'll, we'll cover in this video. Um, but then also, yeah, how fast is it? Like, does it boot up quick? Like, but some of these things at this point, we've got to the to the level of performance where. We're talking about, oh, well, it took me 17 seconds to do something. And this newer one only took me 12 seconds. And it's like, and then they'll, they'll, they'll break that down in percentages. It's like, well, but if you extrapolate that over the course of something that would have taken you an hour and a half, which, yeah, you're right. You know, you save some time. Um, but I forget who I was. I, I, it was probably Marquez who kind of was talking about this like a while ago. And I, it was one of Apple's products. And it's like, well, 
yeah, you do save some time. And I hope I'm not misquoting what he said, because it's definitely not going to be an exact quote. But it was just, all right, if you are physically sitting here waiting for your machine to finish, then it's like, all right, yeah, it's cool that you save, you know, those those seven minutes or whatever. But if most people hit render or, or whatever the, the, the term is or the button says, and you go off and do something else. Um, and then, I, yeah, if it's if it's your business, I get it. You might say, oh, well, I need, you know, I need the the CPU freed up in 20 minutes because I have something else I need to do. Then, yeah, I, I, I get it. Um, one thing that he's probably going to show that if somebody hasn't already is, yeah, when you are doing um, video editing and you're able to edit multiple streams of, you know, 1080p or 4K or 8K video. Like, yeah, that's important. And, and that requires a, a, a great deal of processing power. But uh, yeah, I think I've just gotten to the point when I see benchmarks, I'm like, great. All right, cool. And for the, you know, 90% of the time that I'm not doing anything overly intensive, I'm glad that it, I, I have the potential to do more than what last year's model actually did. So no shade to Dave2D here, but it's just in general. Yeah, benchmarks are benchmarks, and that, and, that, and that's cool. But yeah, I don't, like nobody... I don't say nobody because that's just not true. Mo a lot of people aren't maxing out their computer's performance ni 90 plus time of, of, of 90 percentage of, of the time or whatever. Um, but yeah, for those who, who are, then yeah, good. This will hopefully be a much more powerful machine. Uh, it's not as powerful as like M1 Pro, M1 Max stuff, but it's a decent step up. But in terms of the G... And then even then, I got... <laughs> Oh, this might be longer than I thought it was going to be. So, yeah, what, what do we got right now? So, the 14-inch one is more powerful. Uh, I'm getting a Dell XPS 13 Plus is more powerful. Uh, I guess that Asus might be a gaming laptop. I, I really don't know. But, yeah, it's it's to the point where just looking at the three Apple products, I'm like, okay, getting a, an, an M1 MacBook Pro 13-inch, uh, nah, probably not. Uh, of course, we're talking about the M2 one, but getting the... 14 inch m1 macbook pro it's a little more expensive but for that money you get what appears to be better performance a bigger screen a better screen no touch bar if that's not something you're into magsafe a couple of ports uh if you do the whole comparison because i think that the 14 inch macbook pro start at 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage, whereas the third, I think, I mean, I, I could look it up, but I'm not going to. Uh, so if you're interested, go take a look. But I, I know for certain that the 14 inch models do not start at eight gigabytes of RAM, and I'm fairly certain they do not start at 250 gigs, 256 gigs of storage. So if you do a comparison, you'd have to add 400 bucks to the price of that 13, yeah, $1,300 13 inch M2 MacBook Pro. So now we're at $1,700. So I think an additional what two hundred or three hundred bucks to get get up to the price of that fourteen inch Mac M1 MacBook Pro uh, or M1 M M1 Pro MacBook Pro. Oh my gosh, these names! Uh, so yeah, you you are. It's not a, a direct fair comparison because I, I and I know what's on the screen right now is just performance, but it really is a question of okay, who is this laptop for? You got that M2 MacBook Air, <laughs> and then you got the fourteen and sixteen inch variants. Uh, it's more expensive than the Air, less expensive than the, the, the 14 and 16 inch Pros, but with those 14 and 16 inch Pros, you get way more stuff. So I forget whose it was. I was watching somebody's video and they're like, oh, you know, the people who can't afford 14 inch MacBook Pros are going to get this 13 inch M2 MacBook Pro. And I'm like, if you're buying Apple products, I don't know if that is truly a concern or I don't know if that should be a concern of, well, my budget only allots for a $1,300 laptop, not a $2,000 laptop, which might be the case, especially in 2022 when prices of everything have gone up and, you know, I mean, that MacBook Pro has been 1300 bucks for a while, so it's, it's not a new, a new price. But um, yeah, I just view all Apple products as luxury products. And I don't know if that's how they perceive themselves. I feel like they do. Um, so it's like, well, if you're going to buy this, you should get the better one as opposed to getting this one because you got an Apple product because you want it the best. So don't, don't be cheap. GPU, this is massively better. It's like 35, 40% better than what was available in M1. 
And I think that's very significant because the GPU was, I think, the weakest point of the base M1 products. Like they were good, but they weren't great GPUs. The M2 product is so much better. And it's partly because they're running two extra cores on that GPU, but M2 on the whole is very fast. Xcode builds are faster, Final Cut is faster, Premiere is faster, games are faster. So, yeah, I'm not gonna spend much time on this. Um, did I, did he not finish? Benchmarks yeah, are fast. Okay, I was, there, there was just a one down there. That, that can't be right. So, yeah, I mean, I was kind of getting at that. It's like, okay, you, you saved, I mean, how long How long is the video? Does it say how long the video is that, that we're encoding or whatever the, the appropriate term is? Like, I, I don't know. So if the video is an hour long and you're saving eight minutes, I mean, that's that's cool. But... And in fact, that's the M1. Actually, no, we're not even saving eight minutes. We're saving five minutes. I'm sorry. I was looking at the the, the, the fastest one, which was the 14 or 16 inch M1 Pros, whatever they're called. Um, and then yeah, we're talking about Final Cut stuff. We're we're saving what less than two minutes. I mean, yeah, it's it's really one of those things of it's better, but is it? I mean, if you're on your own an M1 13 inch MacBook Pro, yeah, I, I hope he's going to say yeah, don't upgrade. But if you're looking to buy a 13-inch M2 MacBook Pro, buy it instead of the M1 variant. But of course, Apple doesn't sell the M1 variant, so if you're looking to buy a new one anyway, you only have that choice. But if you're looking to save more time and are willing to spend more money, it looks like you should get one of the 14 or 16-inch versions of the MacBook Pro. Everything's faster. It's M2, right? It's kind of what you'd expect from Apple for their second generation of Apple Silicon. And if your workflow can take advantage of that speed, and especially if you're in Apple's ecosystem and using their apps, this is a fantastic product. And yeah, I mean, even then, there was a lot of caveats of uh, if your workflow can take advantage of it, which some people's can't, um, and you're in the Apple ecosystem, which some people are, some people aren't. Uh, Apple has done a really good job of selling their stuff. But yeah, it's, it's really, really inclusive and while i guess being exclusive uh, you know if you're in it great but if you aren't you aren't <laughs> and of course you can you know like I, I pick up my iphone and iMessage works on it um but i don't have a mac i i don't have um an ipad i do have an apple watch so those two devices work well together but like right now i'm, I'm recording this on my galaxy s22 and, and i wish i wish i I didn't have to always carry my iPhone with me. Sometimes I just enjoy what Android has to op has to offer. And if I mean, I guess I could use. I'm, wow, this has nothing to do with the video. All right, cool. I'm I'm done talking about that. But as I I, I was saying, yeah, if you're in the ecosystem, as as Dave was saying, if you're in the ecosystem, great. Um, and in fact, I, I had a Mac, uh, sorry, um, an M1 Mac Mini that I did use. Uh, and it was nice sometimes being able to. I won't send I messages from it. I, I don't know if I really did much besides that. <laughs> I did do some video encoding on it, and it was quiet. So, and it was it was it was quick. But all that to say, if you're not in the ecosystem, yeah, maybe a Windows machine is better for you. Uh, but even if you, but also if you aren't, it's just a good product. I will say I was highly satisfied with my M1 Mac Mini, and um, yeah, if I used it more, I, I probably would still have it. But yeah, I. I it's a good product, I think is all that I can really say. And I trust that this product, too, is just going to be a good purchase for anybody who chooses it. Is the best one, considering the options you have on, on, on either side? I don't know. Um, and well, I would say no. But, you know, if somebody wants it, they're, they're going to get it. It still is a five nanometer process on the chip. It has faster clock speeds, a couple more GPU cores, faster RAM. But aside from that M2 chip, the rest of the product is largely the same compared to last year's M1 MacBook Pro. Even the battery life is pretty much the same. It still has a crazy long battery life and it's a really good system, but when you look at what else is coming around the corner, namely the M2 MacBook Air, which is a much sleeker and new looking system. Exactly, and that might be it. Just, it looks newer, so I want that one. And it's $100 cheaper, but if you start specking it up, yeah, you know, prices are prices. But yeah, it's newer. That's why I want that one. And I feel there are a lot of people who are just on that same page. It looks newer. The question people are asking is like, why does this thing even exist? Like, why did they only do a chip drop? Why does this not have just a more compelling feature set behind it, especially when they're both very similar in price? Like, people should just get the new MacBook Air instead of this MacBook Pro, 
right? Kind of, sort of. So if you look at last year's M1 MacBook Pro, in terms of the CPU, this would pull around 15 watts at maximum. You just like put it full tilt, 15 watt energy draw. This year on the M2, this pulls about 19 watts. It's not a massive jump up in energy consumption, but it's significant. And the same story with the GPU. So this M1 product from last year, it did about 10 watts at peak. This time around, it's like 13, 14 watts. It may seem insignificant, but it adds up. So this year on M2, it's still a very energy efficient system and it's a much stronger performer, but it doesn't come for free. That performance costs energy and produces heat. And in a laptop that's small like this, you try to get rid of that heat, right? The M2 MacBook Pro has a fan. The MacBook Air does not. And on M2, because these chips draw a little bit more energy than M1 did, I think that the difference in performance at the top end in terms of like sustained performance is gonna be quite different between what a fanless system can do versus what a fan equipped system can. And I agree with that, but why not at least just make it look like the rest of the product line? The 14 and 16 inch models when they came out last year were redesigned. The Air is now redesigned. So why not redesign the 13 inch model as well? And then just make it, shoot, I'd almost say just redesign it. And you could even put, well, at that point the prices would go up. So you need, yeah, I was gonna say just put the, the same chips as, as what was in there last year for the other pro variants, but uh, the price would, would, would go up then. I mean, it, it'd still be a little cheaper than $1,900, but it'd be like, well, why, why are you releasing this so late? I don't, so, so no, in terms of what chip is in it, cool. But definitely, yeah, well, my question would be, well, why didn't Apple just redesign it to look exactly the same way that, that the Air does? And it might have been a, a price thing, uh, or as I was speaking before, it might be, well, we just have a bunch of extra stuff still left over, so we're still going to use those. Dude, like, when you want to maintain a high level of performance for, like, you know, 20, 30 minutes, I think the MacBook Pro will do a lot better, especially in a system that's small like this. Now, because Apple's launching their new chip, the new M2 chip, this is a very important chip to them. It's like their new baby, right? This is representing their, not just this product, but the future M2 based products to come. This has to perform really well. And they're going to choose a fan equipped system to showcase it in. It's dated, but it does the job. It but I mean, yeah, like I, I get what he's saying, but, but, <laughs> but why, yeah, still, why not redesign the chassis so that way it reflects the rest of the product line? Uh, yeah, because the MacBook Air is also right around the corner. That, that has been redesigned. It is an old design, and the bezels look extra thick on this device. And I've never been one to complain about bezels, but as I'm looking at what's on the screen right now, I can only do that. Again, it, it looks old, and that's coming from a person who uses ThinkPads. Which and I'm, neither well, one of them is kind of new, but the other one is pretty old. And and ThinkPads definitely have bezels. But when I'm comparing apples to apples, pun intended, I yeah, like the 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 four. I, I guess that's a 14 inch version uh, on the right side. It just looks so much better. The keyboard also looks better. And knowing that it, it comes with some additional ports, I hate that Apple thinks the notch is a solution to <laughs> to to problems. But the, the, yeah, it's there and, and, and we're just gonna deal with it. But yeah, it just looks so much better. I mean, the screen looks brighter. I don't know what he has uh, the, the brightness level set to, um, but it looks clearer, the, 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 the 14 inch version. Yeah, just, why not change the chassis as well? But it's still a really solid system. Great performance, good battery life. And for enterprise customers, like if you're buying for corporate and you're buying hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of MacBooks at a time, I think you're going to get way better discounts on this machine than you would for the upcoming uh, M2 Mac. So I did look on Apple's website briefly. I was just scrolling through because uh, on eBay, I saw uh, a 128 gigabyte storage version of the M1 MacBook Air. And I was like, I didn't think they made that. Like, like it's a unicorn. So I did some Googling and uh, somebody said, yeah, they made that just for education. So I go to Apple's website and I'm able, if you're able to, to see the pricing for educational systems. So yeah, not you as an individual, but if you're uh, an entity buying these in bulk, you're able to see what the prices are for these uh, 
these these machines purchasing them as an educator or an educational institute or, or whatever. And yes, it's like, I think it's 10% off if you buy like a single one, but when you start buying them in bulk, it looks like you're saving like 20 bucks per machine or something. Like it, it, it wasn't a, a large discount. I, I do think it was $20. So, um, I, I, I think they could, could, could spare the 20 bucks on, 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 and, and maybe buying this model, the discount will be larger than 20 bucks, but, uh, it wouldn't be enough to make it so that they'd almost cost as much as the air. Yeah. yeah. So I think they're just being Apple and, and doing what Apple does. Hey, we got, we got crap left over. We're going to keep charging the same price. We'll put the new chip in it and, and, we'll, and we'll call it good. We're good. Yes, we're good. Okay. Okay, I just want to wrap up this conversation with, I guess, my overall thoughts on this product. So when this thing came in, I thought I would rip on it, right? A product like this should not work in 2022. Like, it really shouldn't. With hardware that's this old, like, there's so much of it that's so dated that the user experience, I imagine, would have been heavily compromised, especially when you're surrounded by, like, really good high-performance devices from Windows and just other options that don't have six-year-old... Yeah, and even then, we only got... We only really got two. Like, we live in a world of, of we think we have choice, but we got two. He's like uh, Windows and well, yeah, and Windows. So that's the only other option. Aesthetics on them, right? If you're looking at this thing with neutral eyes, this is still a very good product. It's arguably one of the best laptops still, despite it being loaded with so much archaic stuff. And, and yeah, that is true. Performance wise, it's still going to be a good machine, but it's just. I want it to look newer <laughs> like that. That I think for most people was really all that it is. I just wanted to look newer. I mean, you, you upgraded the air and that XPS 13 plus, I think is what it's called. looks pretty fancy. I don't know if I'd like using it, but yeah, it, it, it looks fancy. And yeah, this is the last thing. I think he said six year olds. Um, whenever they switched over to the butterfly keyboard, I think that's when they started going with this two USB C port design. Uh, so it's been quite a while. And for it to continue looking like this, it, yeah, it just looks old. And normally I don't care about that type of stuff, but when everything else in your product line looks a lot newer and a lot better, yeah, I just don't like this one. And I, th I think a lot of people feel that way. And it, the truth is, I think it just boils down to being Apple. Not because of their marketing, not because of the branding, but because Apple controls the whole stack, right? They control everything from the design of the product to the hardware that goes in it, to the operating system, to even the applications that people are even able to use on these systems. It's not good control, but it is control. And because they control it all, the user experience is so finely tuned. It's so well engineered that you can get away with this old hardware because the- And same thing on the freaking iPhone. Like the design of it is nice, but they control so much. So they know that they they have the control and that lightning port needs to go and it looks like in two years it's finally uh it's finally going to leave but yeah they control so much so they're able to do what they want and the same thing with that butterfly keyboard that i just mentioned a few moments ago that it it stuck around for i think four or five years and it was horrible and yeah i i think it was a combination of them one not wanting to admit a mistake which was clear as day but two I also feel like they killed the used MacBook market in, 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 in doing so. Because now I, as a consumer, if I have paid attention for anything in the past, what, eight or nine years now, however long it's been, eight years, I think, um, I know I don't want to buy an Intel-based MacBook for two main reasons. One, the M1 or now M2 products are just far superior but two, the keyboard might not work. So it's like, yeah, I, I feel like they knew, all right, we're going to keep this around for a little while. And at some point they knew they were going to release their Apple Silicon. Uh, but the mere fact that um, <laughs> they released uh, MacBook Pros in 2020 at the beginning of the year that still had Intel chips in it. And shoot, maybe they came out at the end of 2019. I feel like they came out at the beginning of 2020 though. And they knew they were switching to Apple Silicon later that year, I mean, even that's kind of a, a shisty thing to do. Like my roommate has uh, a MacBook Air that was made in 2020, 
but it's an Intel version and it's an i3. And I believe the price for that started at either thousand dollars or 900 bucks. But later that year for that same amount of money, you're able to get an M1 equipped one, which is it, if, 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 <laughs> if products could literally shit on other products, that M1 MacBook Air would shit on that Intel Core i3 MacBook Air that was just manufactured a few months prior to it. But the price was the same. And Apple does have so much control that they're able to do stuff like that. They're able to never offer sales on their website. And of course, they know other vendors will, you know, will, will put their stuff on sale. Best Buy, B&H, Walmart, maybe, I don't know. But definitely Best Buy and B&H. I see it on, on sale all the time at, at Best Buy. But yeah, it is a lot of control. And, and like you said, it's, it's not necessarily it's not necessarily a good thing that they have so much control. But uh, it definitely allows them to pretty much do whatever they want to do. User experience is still really, really good. It's a good thing if you're into Apple, but it's a really weird thing as a reviewer because you're like, how do you recommend something like this when you shouldn't? But you, but <laughs> see, like, yeah, just it's OK not to recommend it, though, dude. Like, it's, it's OK to say you shouldn't get it. Um, get the MacBook Air, the 13 inch M2 MacBook Air, if you want something new and something that's probably going to be similar in performance because all of the specs or all, all the benchmarks and things that they ran last year with the M1 versions of the 13 inch products show that the performance gains were there for the MacBook Pro, but it wasn't significant. Then of course, you everything you just showed, if you want something that is more powerful, you got the 14 and 16 inch versions. Heck, if you're able to find a 13 inch MacBook Pro, M1 MacBook Pro that's used or on sale, that's a lot cheaper than the M2 version, Get that, but it's okay to not recommend this product. And yeah, he's having a hard time just saying that, but it's okay to just not recommend it. Even if the user experience is good because you'll get that same user experience in their other products. It just works, it just does. But if you think of it from Windows perspective, my God, like I never thought about this before, but Windows devices, like Windows laptops, they have to work with so many vendors, so many companies, like you got to deal with Intel's chips or AMD's chips. Then you got to work with NVIDIA to get the graphics card in. You got to deal with Microsoft for the operating system or with the Linux distro you're dealing with. Like there's so much stuff you have to take into account. And then the software, like what are the applications that people are using? There's so much stuff you have to take into consideration to make a user experience that's compelling and good for the user. And the which I'll say, clearly that has worked, given the market dominance that Microsoft has in the, the PC market space. Um, yeah, Apple makes a really good product. A lot of people really like Apple. But yeah, like everything you just described does have to happen and has been happening. And it works because of the number of people who own Windows machines. Uh, Apple likes the control and, and it does allow them to do what they want to do. And they know if you want Mac OS, you have to buy our hardware. So they're able to charge whatever they want to charge. And you can't buy a cheap product that runs this operating system the same way you could with windows. Uh, but yeah, that that's, it, it works. So uh, I, yeah, I think we have about another minute left and I want to hear the rest of, of what he's trying to explain, but trying to compare them almost isn't a fair comparison. Just stating what the facts are, definitely you're able to do. Apple controls the entire stack, whereas Windows slash well, Microsoft is more like, hey, here's the operating system. You vendors, make sure your crap works with us. Because if it doesn't, then nobody's going to buy your stuff because it just won't work. Versus Apple is like, yeah, we just control everything and, and we're able to design it the way that we want to. But you get the flexibility when you decide to run a Windows-based machine way harder for windows devices but it, it but it, that's what the reality of the situation is though most people a lot yeah, most people in the world have windows if we're just talking about people who own personal computers yeah most people have windows computers but because of that they could never pull this off can you imagine dell selling a six-year-old xps product with just a chip drop like there's no way they would be able to sell that and that's correct Although six years old, yeah, that would be like yeah, three, 
maybe yeah, I'm trying to just think of like the XPS lines that the form factor hasn't really changed too much in the last couple years. But yeah, six years, that really would be pushing it. But then yeah, Apple does the same thing with their iPhones that it's I'm looking at my 12 mini right now and, and the design of it is a little different. But if I were if I had a an iPhone 10 right next to it, I could say what really has changed? It's squarer. I definitely I will say that it is squarer. Um, and maybe, you know, of course, the A series chip on the inside. But for the most part, it, it looks exactly the same. Whereas with Android devices, devices, the, the manufacturers are constantly trying to make changes to make it look like it does. Like this year's model doesn't look exactly like last year's. So that's just the way that it is. If you want our operating system, whether it's Mac OS, iPad OS, iOS, watch OS, TV OS, home OS, I think is a thing now or whatever. Yeah, with the smart home stuff, you got to buy our hardware and whatever we decide to, to produce is what you're going to have to buy. But this, for whatever reason, it still works. So there you have it. The M2 MacBook Pro, it's new and very old at the same time. And he didn't say it, but you probably still shouldn't buy it. I know a lot of people did. Pre-sales have already gone up. Uh, pre pre-sales have already um, gone online and I think they've already sold out. And um, yeah, so clearly people are buying it, but it's one of those things where it's like, it should have been okay for him to say, only buy this if you want an M2 13 inch MacBook Pro. And it's like, oh yes, that's it. Like not, well, you want an M2 chip and you're just open between whether it's the, the Air or the Pro. Well, well, you, you want the most powerful? Well, no, because that's not true. And it said, like, you, you specifically want this device. Or, yeah, and because, yeah, like, I, I'm even at a loss for words. Because it, it's, it's, it's that middle child of it's the more powerful new thing, even though it looks older. However, it's not the most powerful thing that they make. And I don't, you don't even need to get to the most powerful thing, but there's something else that is more powerful then it that isn't that much more expensive when we're talking about the cost of these laptops. And I won't put a plug in there every time I talk about stuff like this, but the used laptop market, laptop market does exist. So on eBay, if you're able to get maybe a $1,700 14-inch M1 MacBook Pro, why not you know, consider buying used? So... I think I'm gonna wrap this one up. Oh, I'm barping a little bit over here. So, uh, so yeah, I wouldn't buy it. I mean, hearing what he's talking about, it makes me excited about the technology. I am not going to lie about that. But I'll say at the same time, I know that that M1 MacBook Air is right. Or, sorry, M2 MacBook Air is right around the corner. And even now, I'm still thinking, well, maybe I should get a 14 inch one. I have no real need for for one, but. After using these ThinkPads that I have, which are both 14 inches, I don't think I want to go back to a 13 inch screen. I think it's a it's a good middle ground between the 13 and 15 inch models of anything where 13s, I think for me, have gotten to be too small and 15s because of the size of the screen. And then also now the size of like the actual machine's footprint. It's a little too big. Now, granted, as the size of bezels have, have reduced the overall footprint of, of these large machines also has, has gotten smaller, but still like, I feel like these 14 inch machines are like that, that perfect size for being able to use without an external monitor. 13 inches. I say, yeah, too small, but 15 inches makes it so that it just doesn't feel like it's a as portable of a device as it needs to be. Um, aspect ratios have changed a little bit. So everything's not 13 by nine. So maybe, having a slightly taller display that's still 13 inches, 13 and some chains, like 13.6 or four or whatever it is, might make a difference. Um, but all in all, after Dave's six minute video and my almost 35 minute video, what I would say is don't buy it. Wait for the M2 MacBook Air. If you need a, uh, a 13 inch MacBook Pro with a fan, buy 2020's version of it, the M1. But if you have some more money to spend, buy one of the 14 or 16 inch versions uh, of Apple's MacBook lineup. So yeah, I wouldn't buy this.